First off, thank you for spreading all of your amazing messages. I really appreciate that you uplift humanity. Well, we can spread them. They got to hook up with you or they don't go anywhere. <laughs> it's attraction. Good for you. Yeah. We are in this together and we appreciate what you say. Yeah. So my question is, how does viewing and feeling what you're trying to manifest coincide with being in the present now and mindful often it doesn't fit at all because if you're standing in the now and you're focused upon the absence of something you want then you're in contradiction to so ask your question again because you slip a little word on the end mindful that we want to investigate can you say it sort of again sort of what you said how how so I guess what I'm feeling is while being in the now yeah. and present and feeling the current emotions and stuff, how do I also feel what I'm trying to envision like it's here? By deciding how you want to feel in the now. See, it doesn't matter if you're thinking about the past or the present or the future. But what does matter is that you're thinking of it the way your inner being is thinking about it. Because if you're thinking about it the way your inner being is thinking about it, then there's no resistance and value is coming. Can you give us an example of something that you're chewing over? One example would be trying to find a, um, a relationship that matches my vibration and um, values. And obviously, there's being in the now and accepting how things are and um, embracing being single, but also wanting to manifest a relationship and feel, obviously feel the love that I would feel in a relationship for myself, but while also feeling here. I'm going to offer you a really strong statement, and then we'll backtrack and make it all fit together. What we really, really, really would like you to be in the place of feeling and knowing and expressing to us is something like, the manifestation of what I want has not occurred yet, but my clarity about what I'm looking for is so delicious to think about that really Abraham I'm feeling so good in anticipation that it might not even matter if the relationship ever happens now that's a lot to ask isn't it in fact it's the opposite of what most people are asking most people are saying give me what I want and then I'll feel better and we're saying feel better and then you'll get what you want so it's about being so sure you see, if you knew, if you know now, if you knew what your inner being knows about the relationship that's on its way to you, you wouldn't be asking this question. If you had the confidence in your point of attraction in the way that your inner being does, you'd be enjoying the process. Oh, we really want to say this. <laughs> you know, earlier when we were talking about how much fun it is to be physical, and how this is the place where the vibration turns to thoughts and the thoughts turn to things and when the vibration explodes into the now and you get to live it how exciting that can be and how you really really want that but that explosion part is less than one percent of the time you spend and so if you're needing it to just be boom 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 in order to stay happy you're going to have a hard time but if you are happy in anticipation happy in speculation happy in adding a new thing to the list happy in observing others happy in letting in noticing how the law of attraction shows you yeah I'd like some of that that I see over there and I'd like some of that that I see over there in other words as you feel satisfaction in the evolution of your desire and in the closing of the gap because friends we want to say this to you that Esther's impulse is to scream it to you that's how strong our desire is for you to hear it if you can get it that are oh, you in a mundane way joys in the journey the joys in the journey the joys in the journey that's what you but the joy is in the journey because <laughs> because the journey is the most of it what journey the journey of knowing what I don't want the journey of feeling left out and lonely the journey of 
launching a rocket of desire and knowing that I'm not even close to a match for it. The journey of knowing I'm not a match for it, but wanting to be a match for it. So trying a little bit to be a match to it. The journey of figuring out how to match up with what I want a little bit. The journey of giving myself some ease without needing the condition to change. The journey of showing myself that how I feel is about my focus, not about what's manifested. The journey of syncing up with my inner being and feeling that power. The journey of knowing I wasn't synced up and then that I wanted to be and then that I focused and then that I was and what that felt like. The journey of feeling what true momentum is. The journey of feeling what it's like when I'm in sync with my inner being and the clarity and the wit and the humor and the timing that I have when I'm tuned in, tapped in, turned on. The feeling of being so in alignment that who I'm interacting with is irrelevant because my bag of marbles is attracting the best of all the bags of all the marbles and only those who are in sync with who I really am are coming to me. So my resistance factor is way, way down. My alignment factor is way, way up. I'm starting to feel really invincible. I'm feeling so good so much of the time. I don't feel the absence or the lack of this relationship. And then all of a sudden, oh, I see you. I see you and the way I feel is that even though I don't know you at all, I can feel who I think you might be. <laughs> it feels like that. You know it when you see it. You know it when you get in the vicinity of it. Or a feeling of, I wasn't going to go over there, but then I thought maybe I'd go over there and I don't know why I was going over there. I just felt really strong about going over there and then that happened over there. And I thought, I was tuned in, tapped in, turned on. And that journey of discovery is what life is all about. It's not about want it, get it, want it, get it, want it, get it, want it, get it. It's about want it and don't get it and then want it more. And then want it and don't get it and then want something a little more different about it and then want it and don't get it and don't like how I feel and then decide that I'm tired of not feeling good so I'm going to want it and not have it and feel better anyway. Oh, breakthrough right there. Breakthrough right there. I don't have it yet, but I'm clear about it. I'm focused upon it. I'm calibrating to what my inner being knows. I'm no longer calibrating to the absence of what I want, since that's what I've got. I'm calibrating to the vibrational presence of what my inner being sees, and I know that that's going to turn into something. I know the process, and so I'm secure. I understand how it works, and so I am secure. I'm no longer living conditional love. I don't need a condition to change so that I can have a positive reaction to it. I got my positive reaction figured out because I can tell when I feel good and when I don't. And I prefer to feel good and so I do. Thank you. Yeah. So I have come here today. I've been having a question that I would like more clarity on that seems like a question that's been asked many times before, but it seems to me that there's more. We like how many times you said the word question. <laughs> and we want to reflect something back to you because the more evolved your question is, then the better our answer can be. Because when you are growing a question, your answer is growing simultaneously and proportionately. So little questions bring puny little unsatisfying answers, big questions more satisfying answers. And so talk to us about this question that's been growing through life, through your personal life experience, it's been growing. Yeah. Then you must be ready for the answer. Lay it on us. I'm excited. I have noticed that when I want something um, and I say just in passing, I wouldn't it be fun if this thing happened? Yeah. It comes in a very exact way of how I said it. But when something really, really matters yeah. to me. Yeah. When something really, really matters to me, I'm in the way of it. When something really, really matters, I try harder and I'm pickier and I notice when it doesn't come. We're going to tell you something and you're going to recognize this. A lot of you will recognize it as it unfolds here, but this is a big piece and this is the answer to your question. So some time ago, we've told you this story so many times, many of you could repeat it to us. Esther had a long list of things that she wanted and needed to do. And she was overwhelmed by her list. And so she and Jerry were in a restaurant 
and it was the original macaroni grill. It had white butcher paper across the tables and crayons to write on, and Esther was fighting, complaining, really, to Jerry about, I just don't know how I'm going to get on top of all of this. She didn't know what she was looking for. She was just venting how she felt, which was overwhelmed. And the restaurant was nearly empty. They were back in the corner. And Jerry said, well, let's talk to Abraham about it. And we said to Esther, take that crayon and draw a line across the top and a line down the middle. And on the left side, write what I'm going to do today. And on the other side, write what I will delegate to the universe. Esther took shorthand when she was in high school. She was very good at it. She could record everything you say if you don't talk faster than 145 words a minute. She talks about 300 words a minute, so she couldn't... But she could take dictation. And so she had one of those notebooks, and it wasn't written in shorthand. It was written in do this, do this. But there were pages and pages of double columns of things that she needed or wanted to do. And we said, go through the list and put on your side of the placemat what you're really going to do today. What you're really going to do today. Not what you're going to torture yourself with, what you're really going to do today. Which means either something that you really want to do, which Esther wasn't really looking at what she wanted to do. She was looking at what she had to do. She was in a very responsible mode. And we said, write what you're going to do, what you want to do or what you really are going to do. And Esther looked through her list and she wrote down a handful of things, not even a full page. And then we said, put everything else on the universe's side of the placemat. Now, we're going to give you a sentence here that is the sentence that we want you to hear. You're going to hear it a few times because this is the power of what we're giving you here. We said to Esther, put everything else on the universe's side of the placemat. Well, it was a long list. Too much to write with a crayon. So she got a pen out of her purse and she moved that over there and moved that over there and moved that over there. It's kind of funny. Moved that over there. Felt like a sort of silly game to her. But it wasn't long before each thing she moved, she felt relief. Sort of like, not on my list, on somebody else's. Not on my list, on somebody else's. Not on my list, stuff I want done. But not on my list. Feel the relief of that, the letting go of that, the getting out of the way of that. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next